easily one of the most influential movies in the past few decades. And why? Because it's relatable. It tells the story of a depressed consumeristic man who finds his way into a less depressed consumeristic life by the means of a man named Tyler Durden. He's what you'd expect in the average man, you know, pissing in food, sneaking boobies in movies, and blowing up buildings. In all honesty, he's literally me. At least that's the feeling you're left with after watching the movie. One Google search of his name and you're met with hundreds of fancy edits and video essays. So what about Mr. Durden makes him so appealing? <laughs> I was interested to see if the internet had some information on this, and what do you know, it has an entire list of his personality traits. Bold, dominant, charismatic, confident, assertive, I could go on forever. Right when I saw this list, it was obvious to me it parallels a list of a... Hold on now. I can't spoil the surprise just yet. Anyways, these traits, why do they even matter? Listen, I'm not gonna waste your time. All of Tyler's traits seen in this movie are based on confidence. He's bold because he's confident. He's dominant because he's confident. He's charismatic because he's confident. So that begs the question, how does one become so confident? Well, here's how I like to look at things with confidence. The journey to it is like a brick wall that takes a hit every time you do something. This is where the traits that come from confidence need to be forced in order to break this wall. Tyler is seen doing many things that would certainly hit some people's walls hard. One of these things is uh, talking to random people. Most people don't do this, and it's kind of like taking trend for confidence. If you're in high school, I know ultra specific. But during lunchtime, when you're in the lunch line, go stand next to some random fool and start talking to him. It really doesn't matter if it's awkward or not. People tend to worry about things seeming awkward or them being weird. Why would you want to seem normal? Normal is pretty boring, frankly. But anyways, the hardest part about talking to random people is that overbearing, weightful feeling you get, that negative feeling. It's like everything in your body is telling you, don't do this. You just gotta go for it. Realize that no one cares, really. A good way to calm the fight or flight response to social interaction is to think of other situations where the fight or flight response would actually come in handy. Is the conversation you're mustering yourself up to really at the same level as a bear attacking you? That's what your brain tells you and you gotta tell it like, that's kind of ridiculous. You know, obviously being confident in your physical appearance is relatively important. Lifting is an obvious enhancer, but something a lot of people ignore is like skincare. I'm gonna tell you this really sad story. I'm sorry about this. But for a while, I had really crusty lips, and I'd always forget to put chapstick on them, and I couldn't help but lick my lips every couple seconds during a conversation in order to make sure they weren't chapped. Such a small thing as chapped lips made it a lot harder to appear confident in conversations. Another really good tip is to take alcohol, drugs, anything before a conversation. Tyler is seen at right, an actual good, valuable piece of advice that you've probably heard a million times if you watch self-improvement videos and you probably never heard if you don't, is journaling. Specifically, journaling to know yourself better. And you know, the deeper you go, the more impact it'll have. Kind of like me with your mother. And you know, it may seem hard to, you know, gain some confidence at first, but once you have it, it doesn't go away. You just kind of like have it forever. And it becomes really easy to stack on after a while. So now that you're the confidence king over here, you're basically Tyler Durden, right? No, you're not. Let me tell you a little story. As I was growing up, I was a nice passive little boy. By the time I hit middle school, I wasn't the most confident person in the world, but I had some in me more than most. I made friends relatively easily, talked to people easily. High school hits, same fella. I'm a passive little boy. I get pushed around by my friends and whatnot, you know, something you've seen before. Fast forward a couple years, I've been lifting. This alone gained the respect of the majority of my friends. I'm seen as masculine just off that. My point is having that little bit of confidence in middle school and early high school didn't help in earning the respect of people around me, especially true respect. It took me portraying more masculine traits like strength and stoicism for true respect to trickle in. Tyler Durden could be bold and confident, but what if he was fat? He didn't have that signature physique. What if he cried about his problems whenever something doesn't go his way? He can be as bold and charismatic as he wants, but he wouldn't be the same. He wouldn't be masculine. 
which is the core of Tyler Dern. And how do you become more masculine? Literally just watch one Embrace Masculinity Reject Weakness video and by the next morning, you'll physically feel testosterone flowing through your ball sack. Anyways, I'd say the actual top thing that should be prioritized to the way to masculinity is being strong physically and mentally. Both. You can't just have one or the other. Train your body hard to failure where it hurts and train your mind with meditation and journaling in order to have a better sense of control on your thoughts. Follow the advice in this video and not only will you be your good old favorite American hero Tyler Durden, but you'll also be a better version of yourself, which is in my opinion 10 times more valuable.